Hey guys, today I want to show you how to clean a handgun. And this is by no means the uh, right way or the perfect way to do it. Uh, we all have our own opinions on how to clean things. So I'm just showing you how I do it and what I like to do. And you can kind of take that and put it together with other videos and forums and choose your own way. But I want to show you what I do and what's worked for me for the past 20 years. You know, of course, first thing you want to do, make your firearm safe. Before you even touch it, you want to make sure you're safe. Now this one here is a striker fired, so we have to pull the trigger in order to disassemble. Make sure you're pointed in a safe direction. Anytime you pull the trigger, empty or not. So this one comes apart the same as a Glock. Very simple. Um, if you're not aware and you are new to firearms, which I know there's a lot of guys who watch this channel who are, your firearm is made up of a couple basic parts. They pretty much are all the same when it comes down to it, just minor differences. You have your frame, which is your bottom portion that usually houses the trigger and the uh, most of the internals. You have your recoil spring, which goes into your slide. Your slide, which is the part that you rack back. And then the barrel, which goes into the slide. Every gun comes apart differently, but the big thing and most important thing is to make sure you're doing it correctly and not uh, do anything that will uh, damage your firearm. Now the first thing I do is I typically tend to use this uh, Hops Elite or just the plain Hops. Uh, what I do first is I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to spray down by barrel inside and out. I've already cleaned this so I'm not going to do it again. Um, I'm going to clean, I'm going to spray this Hops inside and out of the barrel, spray the recoil spring and spray the slide particularly getting this area here where all the moving parts are. Now I'm going to let that sit. Now while I'm letting that sit, I'm going to pay attention to the frame. Now the solvent, giving it a couple minutes to really kind of do its job really helps out and really gives you a better cleaning. Now I do not like to use a lot of solvent on the frame. The frame's polymers, solvents and polymers don't always do the best. I know they say they're safe for plastics, but you know, if you want to keep a firearm good and pass it on to your grandkids, especially with polymer, yeah, I keep the solvents off. So what I do is I will dip a Q-tip in solvents. I know a lot of people do not like Q-tips because they do tend to leave a little bit of a, like a residue behind on the uh, firearms, but I'll dip them into the solvent. I'll make sure I clean all the metal moving parts, clean them off real good until basically you can do a dry test, which is to take a dry end and rub it on these metal parts and see if it comes out dirty. As you can see, that came back a little bit dirty, so I didn't clean this as well as I should have. You want to make sure to take special care in cleaning the rails that the slide go into. You want to make sure those are clean, because if those get too built up with gunk and dirt, they will um, cause your gun to malfunction. You should have some near the back as well. You want to make sure you clean those real good, dabs the solvent, make sure you wipe it off real good, get all that solvent off the plastic when you're done. You know, you can take a ripped up t-shirt or whatever, clean it all out. You can use, you know, extra patches if you got them, but clean it up real good. Also make sure you get inside your magazine well. You want to wipe that out real good. A lot of times I'll just kind of take a couple patches, wipe in there and see what it looks like. Some firearms throw a lot of, um, powder and, and residue in there, others don't, so it depends on your firearm, but you should always check it, make sure it's nice and clear, because once again, if that builds up in there, that might keep your magazine from uh, fully um, locking in correctly. So let's get that out of the way, we'll talk about these other parts. Now, I like to let everything sit as long as possible with the solvent, so if you got anything else to do to run around, play for a couple minutes, it never hurts to let that solvent sit. Uh, when I come back and I'm ready to uh, actually get to the cleaning, first thing I do is just wipe this recoil spring down with a rag, with a patch, with whatever, and pretty much you're done. If it really comes back extraordinarily dirty, maybe you want to uh, lightly take a brush to it, a little more solvent, and clean it again. You basically want this when you, when you bring a, a white patch on it, you want it to come back pretty clean. 
Now this one here has some oil on it and stuff that's coming off on the patch, but generally you want it to be pretty clean. You should be able to handle it without there getting any kind of gunk or grime on you. Doesn't need much. You really don't have to go crazy cleaning them. They don't have to be completely spotless. I leave my barrel for last. Now the slide is probably the most challenging part to clean. Now what I do is, at this point it's been sitting, usually what I'll probably do from there is maybe take a rag, wipe out all that solvent, give it another couple of sprays. Fresh solvent, get in there, get in there, clean real good, just give it a quick once over, get the worst of it out. Then you're probably gonna see quite a bit of gunk in there. And where it's going to focus is where the firing pin comes out and in this area in here is where you're going to see the worst of it. So what I like to do is take, say a Q-tip, I know, like guys, I know a lot of people don't like them, but get in there, get into these channels, clean the channels really good. And uh, once again, this is something where you're going to want to clean it, clean it, you know, give it a couple sprays of solvent and make sure when, you know, you want to get to that point where when you're getting in there, you're coming back without a bunch of gunk in there. You want that to be nice and clean. You want to make sure you're getting into the channels that the rail go into. It's going to be a little channel in here. You may want to make sure you get into there. You can maybe even just take, you know, a folded up patch. Use your fingernail if it's long enough to get it in there. Maybe a credit card or the tip of your knife. But get something into these rails so that you can get those cleaned out because that can really make your gun malfunction if those get jammed up and gummed up. So, I know a lot of people use uh, like a tip of a knife and a patch and just run it through that channel, but get everything cleaned up. The uh, face there where the firing pin comes out can be really stubborn. You may need to go over that with a hard brush a couple of times, get around the extractor and ejector and all that, and make sure in the end you want this to be nice and clean. Wipe it all down with a rag, set it aside. I oil everything all at once. Now, the barrel's pretty easy, pretty simple. Um, you kind of got your choice of how you want to clean it. Some people use um, like this uh, barrel blast or, or different products for their barrel. Some use um, specific formulas to get rid of like plastics and coppers and, and things like that. And that's okay. Whatever you like is really up to you. Um, some people like to use brushes on their barrels, others do not because they don't want to damage the delicate rifling on the barrel. If you choose to use a brush, I don't use it first. What I like to do is get a jag, and guys, it never hurts. These things are really cheap. Get like 10 of these things <laughs> and get them set up with different caliber brushes and jags. That way you don't have to constantly keep switching between them. So if you have one of each, you can just boom, 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 switch between and you're not constantly taking them off, putting them on. And uh, one thing, guys, quality really does matter. These plastic ones really do have a tendency to break and strip out. Get the nicer ones, get the, br the uh, brass ones, spend the extra buck or two. Um, so what I like to do, real simple, take your jag, put a patch on it, run a dry patch through, then what I'm going to do is take a patch, spray a bunch of cleaner on it, run a wet one through. Once again, run a dry one through. Boom. Get a clean one, spray some stuff on it, put another wet one through. Now at this point you should have gotten 90% of the grime that's in that barrel. If you choose to use a brush, this is the point where I choose to use the brush. Because now you've kind of gotten rid of the worst of it and you can get to that uh, caked on stuff. So if you choose to use a brush, now's the point, run it through a couple of times. Don't overdo it. Like I said, your rifling knees are very delicate. People tend to really over clean their barrels. You really don't have to. You can do a lot of work with the uh, patches. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to run a couple. Uh, dry patches through. And guys, one thing to do, pull them off. Don't drag them back through. You don't want to drag all that material back towards your chamber or towards your, uh, yeah. You don't want to drag it back through the firearm. You want it to, so when you put them through, pull them off. Then bring it back through. So 
you're going to want to run alternating wet and dry. Uh, sometimes even one wet, maybe th or one wet, maybe three or four dry until they start coming out really clean. You know, you can check, you know, this barrel's out, check it, see how it looks. It should look nice, almost like a mirror finish in there. You want to make sure you get your uh, feed lip really good. You can get that with a chamber brush. You can get it with whatever you want, but you want to make sure that's very clean and you want to make sure you get along the outside and make sure this is all very clean and uh, when you run a clean patch over it, you shouldn't be picking up a ton of dirt. You shouldn't be picking up any dirt or grime. Um, you know, we all clean differently, guys. Um, I typically do a deep, deep cleaning on each firearm about once a year. But after the range, I just do a quick, like, five, ten minute cleaning. So now that you got your barrel clean, your slide is nice and clean, everything's nice and clean, what I'm going to do from there is just kind of rub everything down with a rag get all that solvent off make sure you're getting all the solvent out of the nooks and crannies all your cleaners or any products you use off so i give it a really good cleaning or at least a wipe down with a really good you know fresh clean rag you don't want to use some old you know like thing you've been using and messing around with get some nice new clean run it through um if there's anything else you need to do um lots of times you can use a chamber brush for example to get Say if you need to get in your frame a little better, there's parts you need to get into, like the front there, you want to make sure everything's nice and clean. These uh, chamber brushes come in real handy. Um, you can get them in all different calibers. You can get them in nylon or brass. I like the nylon ones. A little more gentle on the uh, finish when you're using them around the slide and stuff like that. So I tend to use these for getting, uh, and plus they really can squeeze them into tight places when they're the nylon ones so they're great for cleaning the small recoil spring holes and all that so i use these a lot too but you'll find you know whatever works for you some people use you know the actual brushes some people use you know i got one of these here for a little tiny detail work so say if you have little tiny nooks and crannies you can actually bend these to get into little weird places where you might not normally be able to reach so if everything's clean wipe it all down then from there, oil. Get these out of the way. You can use whatever oil you want, guys. I pretty much, you know, some are better than others, but, uh, you know, the old tried and true, the hops number nine. I mean, this thing's, you know, one of these will last me probably about a year. You can use rum oil. I like rum oil. It works really good. And you can spray it all over in those uh, tight, nasty spots. Especially if you've got one of these uh, little, uh, I can't pick it up, my hands are all oily now, guys. One of these uh, little guide straws, you can get into the really tight nooks and crannies and lube it up very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a patch, once again, and I'm going to put the hops number 9 on the patch, run that through the barrel. And we're actually going to do this because I've been running all kinds of garbage and brushes through these. These brushes probably weren't clean. So we're going to put a couple drops of oil on this. Since we've been messing around with this firearm. And we're going to put it on the patch. Run it through. And there. Now you have oil inside the barrel to protect it. I'm going to spray down the inside of the slide. I'm going to spray down using the little straw, spray down some of these uh, metal pieces, and I'm going to spray down the recoil spring with either Remington oil or a cloth with the hops number nine. And take a clean rag at this point and wipe it all down. Get everything off it, take it, wipe it down so it's nice and you know, you don't want too much excess oil, it will jam up your gun. And then from there, it's just a matter of reassembly. And I would cut the video from here, but just one more talking point. After we get this reassembled. Well, after you get your firearm reassembled, also make sure you put some oil on these rails. Oil or grease, whatever your choice is. Some people like grease. I just put a little bit of oil right at these metal tabs. You can see them right there and there. There. 
and there. I put maybe a drop or two oil right on each of those tabs. Now, after your firearms back together, you want to make sure you do a function test and make sure you did it properly. Because sometimes, you know, recoil springs don't sit right or something happens. So make sure that your gun fires. Make sure that cycles appropriately. If you have a safety, make sure that the safety operates and that the gun is 100% functional. Then from there, the last step, of course, is to put a nice oil layer on the outside of the firearm. So you're going to take a little patch or a rag or whatever you want to put oil on and just put a real light coat of oil on the slide. Now, after you put this coat of oil on, you don't want to be touching the slide with your hands. You know, your fingerprints and all that are what cause the oils from your hands cause corrosion and all that. At this point, you're going to want to throw this back into your safe or whatever. See, there's a perfect example, guys, what to be careful of. That just there is a little piece of a patch that got onto the firearm. You want to make sure you don't have stuff like that inside the firearm. If that gets in there, that could definitely get into the slide and cause a malfunction or a jam. So you definitely want to make sure you keep an eye out for stuff like that or fuzz from your Q-tips. So you're all clean. At this point, try not to touch your slide. You don't want any fingerprints or anything on it, especially if you're going to be putting it away for a long period of time. Um, so at this point, I will bring this up, put this into the safe, and uh, it will be good until the next time I go to fire it. Hope you guys enjoyed.